So there's a variety of different oncological emergencies that can affect critical care. The tumor lysis syndrome is probably the most important one that you need to know. In a sense, you can think of tumor lysis syndrome as you're going to kill off a bunch of tumor cells, they're dying, and they're going to take you with them. Now, the most commonly associated malignancies are the hematological malignancies, and these are usually because they have a very high uh, tumor burden and then are rapidly sensitive to, uh, to chemotherapy and rapidly sell lice. So the non-Hodgkin lymphomas and the ALLs are the, most, are the most commonly associated with tumor lysis syndrome. You can, however, see the, this condition in patients with low-grade and solid organ malignancies when they have a high proliferation rate and they're therefore very responsive to therapy. Um, those people are also partic can be particularly prone. Anybody who has a pre-existing renal dysfunction is at a higher risk for developing a tumor lysis syndrome and, and also if you notice that they have an elevated LDH, which indicates that they may actually be already lysing tumors, um, are, are also a specific risk factors that you need to watch for. There's any form of treatment uh, for any form of malignancy can precipitate a tumor lysis sy syndrome and occasionally you can actually see patients who present de novo without any evidence of any or with it with a known malignancy but without any evidence of uh, ongoing treatment who develop a, a tumor lysis syndrome spontaneously um, because of the on, uh, because the rapid growth causes uh, anoxic death to uh, some of the tumor cells and you can see this particularly in those uh, high-grade lymphomas uh, more than, than many of the other ones. So the diagnosis of tumor lysis syndrome is made mostly on laboratory work. The findings you should expect to, f to see on your, on your blood work is fairly uh, simple as you understand the underlying physiology. Well, these are a whole bunch of tumor cells that are lysing and they're releasing their contents into the system and they're overwhelming our ability to metabolize them. So the things you'd expect to see are hyperkalemia, these are big bags of potassium basically, hyperphosphatemia because of the energy substrate, hypocalcemia as, their, as binding of the uh, calcium to the phosphate, and then also hyperuricemia. Now hyperkalemia occurs first and probably the most quickly and actually can be the most deadly early on. Uh, hypophosphatemia happens after about 24 hours as the cells begin to overwhelm their ability to uh, metabolize phosphate and other cells are unable to take up any further phosphate. And then following that, after about 24 hours, you start to see the hypocalcemia uh, associated with the binding of the calcium to the phosphate. Crystal formation then follows and can lead to a number of different side effects. First and foremost, crystals can form an obstructive uropathy um, in the uh, kidneys and cause uh, uh, acute renal failure. The purine nucleic, nucleic acids are catabolized as well to uric acid by xanthine oxidase and then excreted and these can then the uric acid can then precipitate in the, in, the, uh, in the renal tubules and can cause both an obstructive uh, um, renal injury as well as a glomerular filtration uh, and tubular injury from both the oxidative stress of having these urate uh, crystals present and as well as inflammation and obstruction. So the thing about tumor lysis syndrome is that unless it presents uh, as a spontaneous condition in somebody who didn't otherwise know that they had a malignancy, the vast majority of patients first know that they have the condition and they're about to initiate chemotherapy. And so you have the opportunity to prevent the problem from recurring before it actually starts. And realistically, prevention is really the best approach instead of waiting until the condition starts. But sometimes you don't either uh, you're either behind the eight ball already or the patient presents spontaneously and you're going to be dealing with the critical care consequences of tumor lysis syndrome. So first and foremost is you make sure that you have at the patient adequately volume resuscitated. They need to have a fluid load in order to keep their GFR up and also to keep urate and, and calcium phosphate crystals soluble so that they don't obstruct the, uh, the tubules. In some, uh, some cases, you may need to initiate some form of renal replacement therapy, either uh, uh, because of the elevated p potassium or occasionally for phosphate, um, and will also help you control their volume status. Now, because of the uh, acute nature of this, continuous renal replacement is probably not your best choice, and intermittent dialysis is much more effective in rapidly clearing all of these metabolites. 
in patients as they present, as, as if it becomes evident that the, um, that the um, phosphate levels are going to be an ongoing problem, then you should also consider starting them on a phosphate binder to help keep the phosphate levels under control. Following their calcium levels closely is also important in order to uh, know when you need to replace them as they're developing hypocalcemia. Now, in terms of specific treatment, for especially for the urate, which is probably one of the more um, problematic uh, side effects of tumor lysis syndrome, there are two medications that you can consider using. One is uh, rasbucane, which is a recombinant uric acid uh, oxid oxidase that ca catabolizes uh, uric acid to uh, a soluble uh, uh, allotonin. This, uh, this medication ideally should be given up front as the, before you st start initiating chemotherapy, and is similar in action to allopurinol, which prevents uric acid formation by blocking xanthine oxidase. Both of these can need to be started prior to chemotherapy in order to maintain, get your maximum benefit from them. All right, well, that's everything. Thanks for watching. And as always, if you have any questions, don't uh, be afraid to leave comments in the section below or contact me directly.